Hey, Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, man. Happy to be here. This is the first podcast I've ever been on. All so right, awesome. A good one. <laughs> yeah, man, we'll definitely do that. It's also one of my first video uh, podcasts, so people who are listening can also watch it on YouTube. <laughs> good. And good. Uh, I have to say, I'm a little bit inspired by your channel because I've been following you for a few months now. And yeah. when I started watching your videos, I was like, oh, this guy is probably doing this for a long time. And then after a few weeks, I noticed, whoa, you're only doing this for like eight or nine months. It's been really impressive. Like, that's, I, I want to talk about it a lot more uh, later on. Sure. But uh, the first thing that I just wanted to ask you is like, why did you start posting a lot of videos on YouTube? I think it was a number of reasons. I mean, I had quite a big Instagram following, but I felt like there was there was no connection between me and my followers. I found it just wasn't the right platform for me because for Instagram, it's all about really great pictures, you know, these short clips which i think at the time used to be like 15 seconds mm -hmm. and you know you had the opportunity to write captions but no one's really interested in reading a big ass caption i found and i felt like it was just it was very hard for me to get what i wanted to get across to those followers to actually do it on that platform so what i did that was one of the reasons the mm -hmm. second reason was because the same questions kept popping up i you know, obviously doing what i do mm -hmm. a lot of people asking me the question how do you do this how do you do that how do you lose body fat mm -hmm. How do you lose love handles? What's the best way to gain muscle? And I always used to repeat myself answering these questions. I was like, do you know what? Mm. I'm just going to make a video on these topics and just yeah. put it out there. And the first series which I did, which did really well, which kind of kicked it off, was it was a common mistake series. Mm. So common mistakes people make when it comes to training chest or training back or training shoulders. And I did a video on each one of them just talking through everything and it did really well i think it was the shoulders one mm. went a little bit viral it ended up getting like a few hundred thousand more views than the other ones oh wow so that's when i started getting interest onto my youtube channel and obviously it's hard yeah. to start off with because i wasn't always the most confident guy in front of the camera mm. but i knew if i wanted to take my career to the next level i would have to start on youtube and I think as I was seeing other people doing it and other people were making a killing in terms of just their growth and the amount mm -hmm. of views they were getting. And I was like, there's no reason why I can't do that. I should be doing that. Yeah. You know, I feel like, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm all right on the camera. I'm you know, easy to get along with. I think it will, it will work well for me if I focus my attention on this. Mm. And I started doing it and it ended up paying off. Well, that, um, that, that... It that's pretty awesome because you started with just answering questions, just like noticing that people are asking a lot of similar questions. Yeah. And then you thought about just adding value and just explaining things, right? And I think when I watch your videos too, I think that's the, the thing that, and when I read the comments as well, is that people really enjoy that you go in depth and explain things really well instead of just showing off because I think it's easy to have the wrong intentions or wrong. It depends on how you look at it, but you went into this just to explain things and help people, right? Instead of just, Oh, look at my awesome lifestyle. Exactly. Yeah. I think you get, Oh, I do. I get a great deal of satisfaction knowing that my videos have helped people mm. and you know, these videos are free. And if I never went into, you know, making these videos thinking, oh, I want to make these videos to make money. No, I want to make these videos just to to help people to get my knowledge across. And I just to be respected as well. I'd, I like, obviously, going to the gym, health and fitness is my life. Mm -hmm. I would like to be a well-known and respected figure in that industry mm -hmm. because I was trying to reverse the roles. Like, obviously, I do, you know, I've got to learn from somewhere. So there's the people I look up to, mm -hmm. usually the older guys, they know their stuff. And I've learned a hell of a lot from them. And when you learn a lot from an individual, you just think, that guy, I like that guy. Yeah. Like, he's really helped me out. And I was like, I would like to be, I, yeah. want to, I want to be in their shoes. I want people to be saying that about me. Yeah. That was, you know, one of the reasons why, like I said, I got into it. And it just, it, it feels good to continue making videos like that. Yeah, because you can tell that you have that approach and it's genuine that you want to help people. And maybe that's because you're a coach, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I also wanted to ask you, like, 
when did you knew that you were a coach or that you were a good coach or that you that you could help out people when was the first time you realized that well this is interesting because i started personal training probably in 2013 mm. and obviously i knew how to get in shape because i've been in shape for a while but getting other people in shape is a whole other ball game like mm. it's not just about getting people to follow a program and telling them to do this to do that it's trying to find out what makes them tick like what mo motivates them how to get them to enjoy a session how to get them to step out of their comfort zone okay. and obviously because that was my main job all i was doing was personal training people you know five six hours a day every day yeah. the more you do it the better i was getting at it you should be getting better not everyone gets better there's a lot of pretty yeah. poor personal trainers out there but yeah, yeah. i was improving the more i was doing it and i wanted to start you know as i was learning i wanted to start you know, spreading that knowledge on platforms such as youtube but i was a bit afraid because i was like mm. well what if i don't know enough because obviously i was comparing myself to these guys these experts who have dedicated decades to their you know their field of research yeah and what if i say something wrong and someone calls me out on it mm. and that was one of the reasons why i kept putting off creating all this content because i thought someone was going to have a go at me and then when i started seeing other coaches whether it be in gyms or on youtube you know when they would talk about particular topics i was like hang on this guy doesn't have a clue what he's talking about and i started to realize <laughs> there was a gap in the market particularly yeah. on youtube of people who actually knew or who actually you know knew the topic which they're trying to uh, talk about yeah so it was a couple of you know a couple of years into training i realized i was a good coach in terms of the one-on-one -on -one. um but when it came to being an online coach, it's a little bit different because you don't see that client in person. Yeah. So I was doing a little bit of that on the side. Yeah. But, so, but when do you when do you know that you're a good coach? Do, when you see uh, results. When you see results, well, yeah. obviously, when you're getting your clients' mm. results, when they're obviously they're coming back for more. Mm. Uh, okay. That's good. And then I guess when you're just in demand. Mm. But it's. You could be a good coach and not be in demand and no one know about you. That's also a good point, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard to say. I guess when other people start saying he's a good coach. Ah, okay. That's So that's when it. people it's refer it. you, like it, you have to work yeah. with this guy or you have to watch this guy's videos because I, I have to be honest. I told my friend at the gym, I was like, hey, man, you got to watch Mike's videos on YouTube. Yeah, that's it. I've answered my question, yeah. Anyone could call themselves a good coach. It's yeah. what other people will say about you. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great point. And I also, uh, what I really enjoy is that um, I had the exact same reason to go into productivity because I write a, a lot about on my blog about productivity, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason that I started was I was also following people online and uh, sometimes reading articles. And I saw a lot of bullshit out there. And I was like, is that really do you really have to wake up at 4 a.m to be productive come on man. <laughs> <laughs> like i'm a night owl and i always you know got a lot of stuff done in my life so i was like uh, you know you I, there's a different way to do it you know and then i thought let why not share my perspective and i feel like you did the same thing right that you thought you know let me just put stuff online yeah definitely i was gonna ask do you listen to the tim ferris show yeah yeah, I that's I listen to that as well, and that's that's yeah. really stepped up my productivity, mm. and it's it's massively helped my life. Um, yeah, man. Like you say, it's everyone kind of they've got to find their own routine, which is going to get the best out of them. And you know, I I used to see people preaching that oh, you know, if you want to get the most out of your day, you've got to sacrifice sleep. You know, you can only sleep four hours a night, yeah. and I was like, what? <laughs> like if I was to do that, I would feel terrible the next day i won't get anything yeah. done yeah. my cravings would be through the roof and it just would not work for me and obviously in terms of my physique my physique would go downhill as well yeah. and i've just realized sleep is very important yeah. it is crucially important but you know the hours that you have in the day you have to make the most of them mm. and i've found personally when it comes to my productivity i am the most productive in the morning mm. so when i wake up first thing obviously everything's gonna be a little bit hazy I have some yeah. water, I have a coffee, and yeah. I'm like, right, I can sit down at the computer, yeah. and I have a good 
four hours in me yeah. where I can, you know, I've just got tunnel vision. I do the things okay. which need to be done. And do you eat as well or do you eat after? I tend to find I don't have so much of an appetite in the morning. Once mm. I've had my coffee, you know, I'm I'm fine. I find that what, as soon as I start eating, that's it. The floodgates are open. I just yeah. want to carry on eating. Okay. <laughs> I found my appetite is great in the evening, so I save a large portion of my calories later on in the day. Uh -huh. So I tend to just, you know, I'm fueled by coffee. I probably have like two cups. Try not to overdo it. Yeah. And I just drink water. And usually the first few hours I'll do my work. And then I'll probably eat something a couple of hours after waking. It tends mm. to be around 11 or 12. Mm. So almost um, a little bit like intermittent fasting? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I'm a, a big sort of fan of the there's the 16 hour fast and then the mm. eight hour feeding window mm. but it doesn't have to be exactly on the point it will really depend on how i feel what i'm doing and when i'm training mm. i tend to find for me my sweet spot for training is between 12 and 3 no okay. idea why but that is when i'm i feel like i've got the most energy yeah. i feel like i've got the most kind of focus when it comes to the training itself and it's also you know, because I've had such a productive morning, after mm. a couple of hours of working, I'm like, right, I need to yeah. move away from my screen now because I'm getting square eyes. Yeah, it feels better as well because you know you've done a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's one one thing which is so important for me when it comes to training. I can't, or I can, but when I go to the gym and there's a lot on my mind mm. in terms of work that needs to be done, I'm like, I shouldn't really be here. I should be at home you know, yeah. answering these emails or, you know, helping these clients. But once I've done that in the morning, all those very important tasks which needed to be done have been yeah. done. Yeah. So that is a whole load off my mind so I can just go in there and focus on what it is that I need to do in the gym. And then usually after that training session, I'll come back. Obviously, the day's not over, but I will tend to move on to other things which need to be done, things which I get a little bit more enjoyment out of. Yeah. So that tends to be more of the social media side of things, creating content. Okay. Um, so you get your uh, workout, or you get your work, uh, you work in the morning first. You yeah. wake up, you know, have a coffee. Get it. Tend it tends to be the things yeah. I enjoy doing least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. And I obviously I try to minimize yeah. those things. I I want to do the things which I get the most pleasure out of. But there there will be things which yeah. I guess like everyone, you know. Yeah, yeah. Things I don't enjoy doing the most, but it needs to be done. Yeah. So I just, yeah. I, I just you know. I just did my taxes for last quarter. So <laughs> yeah, so, so things like that. If I yeah. try, if I leave that to the end of the day, I'm like, no, that's not happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to get those things done, you know. But uh, I think it's interesting to talk about nutrition. So you talk, you um, eat after you uh, get your work done. So what what's a typical so meal for I, you? I tend to function better in the morning of mm. proteins and fats okay um and say for example if i'm going to be training in the afternoon i probably have a, a proteins and fats based meal to break the fast and then now a couple hours later i have some carbohydrates maybe some more protein an hour before the workout itself um the reason why i like proteins and fats it just it keeps that productive flow going mm. and it, i find it very satisfying in terms yeah. of you know my hunger it just satisfies that hunger yeah if I was to have some carbohydrates and protein, I tend to find it makes me a little bit sluggish mm. and makes me want to consume more carbohydrates. Yeah. Um, so I've just found that works for me. But when, when I tell people that I do that, they think, oh, yeah. so you have to have proteins and fats first yeah. in the morning. I'm like, no, you don't. You, know, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. But you have to, you know, the, the, it's almost like the first meal of the day is really going to dictate how the rest of the day goes. Yeah, I'm I'm exactly the same. When I I've been experimenting with this as well. I think I heard it in one of your videos as well. So these days my um breakfast is mostly either eggs, avocado, um walnuts or anything that has protein and fat. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've tried hummus as well. <laughs> <laughs> um but like what are, what are your favorite things so, you have? Uh with eggs, I'll always make myself an omelette, it's nothing mm. extravagant. I always just tend to do the same thing. It's usually like four eggs, you know, mm. some chopped garlic, some salt, pepper, yeah. maybe a bit of liquid seasoning, but that's pretty much it. Mm. Or I've found that having an avocado and a tin of tuna steak okay. all mixed up, that's good. 
Mm. Also, salmon fillet with vegetables. Mm. I, I could eat salmon all day, every day. I love it. I don't understand yeah. when people say, oh, you know, I don't like fish. And I'm like, yeah, yeah but what about salmon? They're like, no, I hate salmon. I'm like, yeah. how can you hate salmon? Yeah, <laughs> not, salmon? not even like, not really, it's not a fishy fish. If you yeah. know what I mean? Just, yeah, exactly. Um, and then, I guess, I've never really, I could do, but having steak and nuts would be a solid breakfast. But, mm. um, and one thing I've done recently, uh, the I did it on a YouTube video was the lean uh, mints around five percent fat yeah mixed with peanut butter okay <laughs> <laughs> everyone, I remember I did the video and everyone was like yeah are you mad like what kind of combination is that yeah yeah everyone, sounds everyone good start, everyone started trying it and they were like okay Mike yeah. okay <laughs> it's all right I see where you're coming from oh man I, yeah. somebody somebody else do that and I was like. That is the craziest combo, but I like mints and I like peanut butter. Yeah. So I thought, um, I'm, I generally think peanut butter goes with everything. So yeah. I tried it. It was good. Yeah, especially yeah. with chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not a good thing to start your morning with. But, no. uh, uh, but yeah, that's cool. Because I think um, a lot of stuff that you talk about and is about getting to know your own uh, body and your own lifestyle and just build a whole, you know, almost a system around it. Yeah, um, I, I think those that are the most successful are the ones who are very self-aware of their own body and yeah. can almost master their body and yeah. understand the, the the temptations which they have and to be able to basically just say, no, mm. this you know this isn't good for you, so don't do it. We're going to yeah. have this instead. Mm. And, you know... Even though I feel as though I've mastered quite a lot of my sort of desires, which don't necessarily bring me many benefits, yeah. I, I would say I still struggle with food. I mean, I I'm so passionate about food. I love food, yeah. and it's never been an issue eating enough. I could, I could just eat nonstop. I'm like a bottomless pit. Yeah. The hardest thing I find <laughs> is is just keeping my portion sizes down. Yeah, and cutting like so if, if I need to cut for. Yeah whatever it might be mm. i generally don't enjoy it it's I, I i despise being hungry yeah do anything to not be hungry um and i've made mistakes in the past whereby i've been too restrictive and then you know eventually you just crack yeah. you binge yeah yeah yeah. you just undo all the hard work you've done yeah but what like what's your philosophy is it if you do if you do it one time it's not a big deal right What'd or you, is it if you what do you mean, like a cheat meal? Yeah. No, nah, it's fine. Yeah. It, it's again, it, it depends on your goal. If you're an individual yeah. who is really struggling to get their body fat down, mm. and they're making very slow progress, yeah, if you have a cheat meal. It's really not going to help you at all. It's just going to set you back. Mm. And if you're the type of person that, if you have a cheat meal, you will really throw yourself off in terms of your, you know, your discipline. And then the next day you'll have another cheat meal and then, you know, it will completely set you off on a bad, uh, you know, routine for days after that cheat meal. Yeah. It's probably not a good idea for you to have a cheat meal, but if you're the type of person who's, you know, you're making progress, um, on a week to week basis and you want to have a cheat meal, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you can yeah. still make progress and have that cheat meal, but it's really down to the individual and their goals and how badly they want to get to their goals. Yeah, that's I found a good point. People some people need to be so strict when it comes to their nutrition and they need to be in the same routine because if they if they if they have that cheat meal it's going to throw them off and it's going to mess everything up yeah whereas other people can be more flexible and you know a cheat meal isn't really going to do that much damage for them um and i'm the same like i like saturday evening is my sort of night to eat whatever i want yeah It'll be a couple of hours where i'll just i'll just eat yeah i fancy and if I eat the right foods, which is healthy, um, you know, I'll wake up the next day, I'll be fine. And yeah. but if, is if I have like if I was to have like a Domino's pizza is and then I go and have dessert in the evening, I'll just feel absolutely well satisfied, but pretty disgusting. And then it's the next day where I'll just be like, I'll just crave that same meal again. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's very hard to get back into that good routine. <clears throat> And I think there's more reading that I want to do, but it's it's the gut bacteria 
And if, if you're eating junk food, you actually change the bacteria in, in your gut, which then sends signal to your brain to consume more junk food, mm. which makes sense. Because if, if you have like a very a diet, which is pretty low in sugar, you know, no processed foods, you don't really have cravings for crap. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's true. And when I work out more and consistently, I don't even crave any bad food. Yeah, exactly. And it's when I get I get myself in uh, you know that flow where I've had a couple of weeks or throughout the week where I've just, just had like the cleanest diet, and I'm like, do you know what? Even though it's Saturday and it's time for my cheat meal, yeah, I'm like, I don't want to do it because I know if I have if I have it. It's going to ruin that routine. I'm going to wake up the next day and I'm going to go back to wanting that junk meal again. And I don't, you know, yeah. there are times where I'll just be like, I'll just go out, I'll have some sushi and that's it. Keep yeah. it healthy. It, com it comes out down to knowing yourself, right? I think if, you, um, yeah. if you're just starting to eat healthy and you've been maybe not really focused on nutrition in the past, and if you want to get that consistency and you want to build that habit of eating clean and eating healthy, then I also would say, you know, don't cheat, you know, because it's about building the habit. And mm -hmm. like you say, when you ha when you have that cheat meal and you feel like, you know, eating chocolate or whatever it is, what your poison is the next day again, then that habit goes out the door. So it's all about building the, the habit. And once you do that, you automatically, that's what, what my experience is, you see the impact it has on your life. You feel much more you know, focused. You have a lot more energy. You look mm -hmm. better. You feel better. And then all of a sudden, you're like, hey, man, I'm living really great now. Why would I even just eat you know, dessert every day? Yeah. And I think it's... It, it comes down to the individual again because everyone tends to have a weak point. Mm. It doesn't yeah. always necessarily have to come down to nutrition. It might be that they struggle to actually go to the gym in the first place. Yeah. They, just, you know, they might eat perfectly, but when it comes to training, they're like, "I don't want to do this." Yeah. Or they might be able to go to the gym. That you know, they have no problem getting there, but when it comes to working out, they just really struggle with pushing themselves. Yeah. Stepping, getting themselves to step out. Of the that, that's been my issue as well. A long time, I didn't really uh, get the most out of my workouts, and now yeah. that I do, I see much more results because now I just really focus on every rep that I do. Yeah. And it makes such a difference. And even though I was eating right, but I wasn't really getting the most out of every workout. Yeah, it, that's it. It's so important. I'm glad you said that because I had it was it, I, when I came back from Portugal. I was listening to this podcast, the Tim Ferriss one, mm. when he interviewed Dorian Yates, and I was just thinking like, this guy. He was telling me, well, he was saying about the the workouts he did. They're only about 45 minutes, mm. and the the routines were nothing special, but it was the the level of intensity which he put into some of the working mm. sets, like just beyond, you know what is it just seems unreal how hard he would put or how hard he would train in that particular set like the intensity was ridiculous that no only hardly anyone could match that level of intensity and i just thought do you know what what if i you know, what if i go to the gym and i try and just make it doesn't have to be every single set but at least two of these sets of each exercise the most intense sets possible how can i make it as hard as possible how, you know, how can I make it the most effective set possible? And I went in there, I did this back routine. Mm. I did nothing out of the ordinary, no crazy exercises or supersets. It was just this ridiculous focus. And I kept thinking about, you know, how he would train. And the soreness after that session, <laughs> I had like three days, yeah. my back was just in pieces. Yeah, yeah. Not because I was lifting any heavier than usual yeah. or doing any routine out of the ordinary, but it was that, mental focus that i was putting into every single repetition it was almost like you know usually when i'd kind of stop i was like no i'm not going to stop i'm going to do one more mm, but yeah. just refuse to let my body go through the path of least resistance and to continue to place all of the tension created by the weight on that muscle which i'm trying to target and it was ridiculous how sore i was because I, mm. I don't really get that sore on my back mm. and i was like wow that was that was insane but I went to the gym again. It was like the day after, and I was like, "I'm going to do exactly the same thing." Yeah. But the problem was, this is when I got back to work after a week off in Portugal, and I was like, "Oh my god, I have so many emails to catch up on." I was like, "Oh, I need to put a YouTube together." No focus. 
Yeah, and I was meant to think about all this stuff I needed to do, and I went to the gym, but I, yeah. I was back of my mind. I was thinking about it, yeah. and the session yeah. was nowhere near as effective as the one I had the day before. Even though I was lifting heavy, it was yeah. just the the level of concentration and, and intensity within it. Yeah. yeah, the power of focus, man. It's just so crazy because I would always in the past would always listen to music or podcasts or audiobooks or whatever during my workouts. And when mm -hmm. I stop doing that, I don't listen to any music, you know, I just go and I just look at what I, what's in front of me, you know, whatever mm -hmm. I have to lift or whatever I have to do. And I find that works a lot better for me, just no distractions. And, you know, rather not talk to people as well, but, you know, yeah. you have to oh, be social sometimes as well. But anyway, <laughs> what I've done now is I don't train with anyone. Yeah. I, I used to, when I was in Newcastle, I had my training partner who I trained with every day. Mm. I can't lie, it was a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah, the, sessions, the sessions I have now are the most effective sessions I've ever had. I used to train with another guy, you know, based in London. Um, and it was, I realized that I would just go there and we'd just make up these routines on the spot. <laughs> and we didn't really pay attention to the weight that we were lifting. We just kind yeah. of matched each other because we were both pretty strong. Yeah. And, you know, there was a lot of, you know, we had a laugh in between sets, weren't really concentrating, paying no attention to the tempo yeah. or the rest period. And I actually noticed after doing this for, it was about two months, my physique was actually going downhill. I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was like, I don't look that great. Like, what the hell is mm -hmm. going on? Yeah. And I, I just realized that like, these sessions aren't very good. And yeah. there was no programming. There's no strategy in place. I'm just winging it on the spot just you know just think you know i'd, I'd do a rep a set i'd be like yeah this is this weight's about right yeah let's just carry on yeah. and you and, talk and you don't have time to think about it you know yeah and i i like, can relate yeah. i'm exactly the same when i work out with my friends or i when i work out maybe the 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 weight is maybe too high you know i can't mm -hmm. maybe lift it but i still do because i'm you know talking and you want to you know, show off maybe a little bit or just go with the flow or whatever it is. But you don't yeah. have that time to reflect. If you're by yourself, you can just think about it a little bit more and be more conscious about what you do. Yeah. And it's funny because when, yeah. my, my, when my girlfriend comes over, she's based in Sweden. Mm. We, we started training with, with each other. And I noticed that when I trained with her, the How sessions... did you get a girlfriend in Sweden? I must ask. <laughs> that's, that's the story. Well, I'll just tell you about this. Like when I used to train with her, yeah. started off training with her. I was like, these sessions are terrible. Like yeah. I can't concentrate when I'm training with my girlfriend. So yeah. when we go to the gym now, she goes off and does her thing, and I'm, I do my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just works. It's weird, but it works. Yeah, I believe, I'm a big to, believer. Back to the girlfriend thing. Um, it actually it all went down in the DM. <laughs> <laughs> she. Yeah. Was, it was around, I think it was June last year, and uh, she sent me a, a direct message on Instagram. Mm. And, you know, I get quite a lot of messages from guys and girls. Yeah. This, this one particularly, she just stood out. Mm. You know, she, she was very confident, which I liked. And uh, she made me laugh in a few of her messages. I'm like, who is this girl? Yeah. And so obviously I added her and like, the, the, the conversation was flowing. I added her on Snapchat, sending messages back and forth. Mm. And I was like, I need to meet this girl. Like, yeah. obviously, she was based in Sweden. I was based here. I was in Newcastle at the time, okay. and I was like, "I'm going there. Like, I'm just, I'm going to go book a flight. I'm oh, going to awesome. see it." Yeah, uh, I had never That's spoken awesome. to her on the phone. Yeah, nothing like that. So it was yeah. a bit of a risk because this girl could have ended up being some kind of a freak. Yeah, man. And like, uh... it's the same thing for her. Like, I could have been, I guess not. When Snapchat's there, there is the face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah, that could have been some, you know, fifty-year-old man hiding <laughs> behind someone else. And if it didn't them. work out, you could always go to catfish, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but I went, I went there, yeah. and you know, when I don't, know, you just we just hit it off like it was mm. amazing. It was one of those trips where I didn't think it was going to go the way it went. Yeah. On like the last day when I was going home, I was like, oh shit, like. This is pretty serious. I didn't plan for this to happen, yeah. and it literally went. You know, it, it was intense, pretty quick, and you know, I've been with her since then. Mm -hmm. And the long distance relationship thing, I guess, is quite interesting. There might be some of your viewers or listeners who yeah. were in long distance relationships. Yeah. And well, I know it, my I, current girlfriend through Instagram as well. 
Yeah, it, it can have its pros and cons. I mean, the good thing is yeah. I live at home now. It's the first time I live at home by myself. It's the first time I've ever lived by myself. Yeah. And I've found the amount of stuff I can get done is ridiculous. Mm. You know, you're all about productivity. My productivity yeah. goes through the roof because there's no one here to distract me. And, you know, when she comes over, I used to get frustrated because I had, like, my, my amount, what I got done in a day was just a fraction of what I would usually get done in a day because, obviously, she was here. I was, you know, eating food with her, going out, you know, doing all the things you do with your girlfriend. Um, but it was because it was a very in intense short stay. I would get no work done. I was like, yeah, I love it when she comes over to stay with me. But I'm like, I get nothing done. Mm -hmm. So it was. it's really about, you know, if, if I do end up living with her, I have to find a balance yeah. of yeah. spending time with her and getting work done. Because I guess a lot of people who are in relationships – when they come home from work, you know, they spend the evening together and watch a film. But I don't do that. You know, I'm by myself. So I'm like, well, I'm going to edit this YouTube video and do this bit of learning or whatever it is that I need to do. Yeah, it so has my pros and cons, right? Yeah. So yeah. productivity just get, carries on throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, so it is, I find that's, when I end up living with a partner, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I yeah. think I will probably have to get a property or find an office which has its own little yeah, man that's... where I can just hide away from everyone and just yeah. have like I would love to have this like outdoor shed with like glass walls overlooking the ocean which would just have my desk yeah. uh, maybe some weights and just be like the ultimate man cave where I can hide yeah. away and do what I need to do you won't find the ocean in London that's for sure yeah I know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, you know, having a relationship that's a little bit, my, my girlfriend lives an hour away. It's not like, you know, by car, <laughs> not by uh, plane in your case. But yeah. uh, but the pro, I think the, the good thing, what I like is that if you are uh, separate, then you can just focus on your work and your career and your tasks. And yeah. I think when, when you're together, I, I always try to spend 100% of my time and focus when we're together, right? So I make sure that I get everything out of the way uh, when I'm alone. And when yeah. we're together, it's just, you know, no work, nothing, no, not even in my mind, because if you do, then you're always, you know, distracted and not, not physically there, I think. Yeah, as well. definitely. I think I, I listened to another podcast, which they were talking about the importance of being in a relationship where you both help one another. Mm. Yeah. So if you're with a partner who helps you to achieve your goals, then that is that's ideal, really. Yeah, it can sometimes actually help when you're in a relationship because, you know, when you're single, you spend a lot of time talking to girls or yeah. going on dates, yeah. which can be very time-consuming mm. and distracting almost. Yeah, yeah. I look at all the people. I know people who are single um, in Amsterdam or in London, and I got to tell you, man, it's it's not easy because. People are, I, I, I don't want to complain or anything, but like the whole Tinder stuff, um, yeah. it's so, because people, they're talking to dozens of people at the same time. And and I know a lot of people, it's frustrating. Yeah. And if you're in a relationship and you have to be in a good relationship as well, because if you don't have that support, I think when it only consumes your energy, and I think a lot of people have been there as well. I've been there in the past as well. When you have a relationship and it takes out all your energy instead of giving you energy. Yeah. That's also not good. Yeah, I, I guess it comes down to time as well. Obviously, time your time is so valuable. Mm -hmm. And if you're not spending time with someone you actually want to be with or you want to spend your time with, then it's like, well, what's the point? Yeah. Like I've been on some relationships or dates. I've been with partners. I'm like... What am, I even, what am I doing with this person? Like, yeah. I don't even, I'm not enjoying the time I'm spending with you. Yeah. And that's, yeah. In the past, Same I way. would kind of, I would let, I didn't understand myself and I would let, you know, bad relationships continue to exist. Whereas now, you know, before I met my, my current girlfriend, I'd just be like, if I don't enjoy spending time with her, if I don't really like this person or if I know they're not good for me, then I'm like, well, end of, you know, I mm -hmm. just call it a day yeah. instead of, trying to let it drag on yeah I, I i'm a big believer in that too because sometimes people say oh no maybe it takes a long time to like each other and you just ha give it a try and 
I don't know, man. I, 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 I'm not a believer in that. Just giving it a try just because yeah. you don't want to be alone or whatever. Right. Or maybe yeah. the person is at your work and research even shows that the more often you per you see a person, you will find the person more attractive. Yeah. So no I, wonder people have so many relationships at work. Yeah. I think it's, it's funny what you said about people being afraid of being single. Um, you know, just be in relationships for the sake of being in relationships. Mm, yeah. And I think you really first have to, you know, almost love yourself and be comfortable with being single yeah. before you can love someone else and spend time with someone else. Yeah, same here. Yeah. That's yeah. one of the things that I always learned from my father. He will always say, you know, you have to, you know, be comfortable with yourself or love yourself before you can love someone else. And it's really common sense, but not a lot of people practice it because that's one of the things that I often talk about. You know, common sense is not common action. You might know a thing, but if you don't practice it, you know, what's the use? Yeah, exactly. And, and the same, like, now we're talking about relationship. We, relationships. We went from nutrition. Uh, I don't know <laughs> how we got here, but that's fine because, you know, we're talking about things that impact your daily life. Um, yeah. But uh, when it comes to common sense, I'm often surprised by all the bro science in the gym of people eating 500 meals a day, um, you know, all kinds of other things. And I, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the things, you know, like typical bro science that you say, you know, these are real misconceptions and why do people even do this? I think the biggest one is people think they have to lift heavy to get big. Mm, okay. They yeah. don't. Um, I think the, the first thing you have to understand is how to move the weight from point A to B with the muscles which you're actually trying to engage. That's the most important thing. And I think another bro thing is, you know, I guess when people think in order to put on size, you have to go through some ridiculous bulk. Mm. And a lot of people just tend to overconsume massively and get fat and they just don't look good and they put themselves in a worse condition to actually build muscle. Mm. Um, and then the same with cutting, people think that, well, you know, in order to cut, I have to drastically drop my calories. And obviously, you know, if you do that, it's just very unsustainable. You end up cracking and you, you'll end up going up on a binge. Um, that's what a lot of women do as well. They drop their calories to like crazy yeah, numbers. With, when it comes to male and females, you know, they should really be training the same. They should be doing resistance training. Mm. Obviously the, it's, it's due to hormones. It's, it's going to be very hard for females to get big mm. or to put on a lot of muscle and to get to the lowest levels of body fat. They've got to understand that. So if you're a female going to the gym and lifting weights, you're not going to get massive. You're not going to get huge just by doing that. It's very yeah. hard for females to put size <laughs> Women are up. often afraid. Uh, or my girlfriend says, I, d I don't want to get really mass, uh, you know. Yeah. I don't know why why people still and I'm like that's not how that. it works. If it it will if if it worked like that, you know, everyone would look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime. Yeah, exactly. It's it's ridiculous. And I'll say another bro thing as well is, I think people often think in order to lose body fat, you need to do cardio. Mm. Uh, and people spend a hell of a lot of time on the treadmill or doing whatever, trying to drop the body fat when really they just need to tweak a few things with their nutrition. Um, and you know, like I said, if, if, if you're trying, you can't chase both goals, you, you can't go to the gym and then focus on building muscle and then go and spend like half an hour on the treadmill, which is, you know, focusing on, you know, losing body fat. I'd rather separate the two, Yeah. but you really just focus on building muscle in the first place. And if you are going to do cardio, you can do it. It can be an effective tool at losing body fat, mm -hmm. but it's not essential. It's definitely not essential. Yeah, I, I think it's really important because I also have a lot of uh, female listeners and readers just to point out that there's there are no real differences, right? In terms yeah. of no, training if, routines, strategies, nutrition. Yeah. When it, if, if I was to, I think that the main difference is just the type of program that I provide for a female. Because I do have female clients. I'm not going to get them to do loads of shrugs or to do loads of uh, pressing exercises to build their chest. Yeah. When it comes to females, you know, most females want to have a nice bum, mm -hmm. and tonight, you know, just yeah. generally they want to be toned and have a, like yeah. nice legs and toned so arms would, and yeah, as well. So I would get them to do, you know, they're probably doing 
more glute exercises, a lot more hamstring based exercises compared to males. Yeah. Um, and you know, when they when when they think of this tone, you know, getting toned, what getting toned means is basically building muscle, mm-hmm. reducing the body fat around the muscle, which gives them the appearance of being toned. That's how you get toned. You have to mm-hmm. go to, you have to lift weights to build the muscle. That's good to, to realize. Reduce. Yeah, because uh, often we try to do things, and I will, when I look at myself in the past as well, I would try to maybe look you know, a little bit more muscular or whatever, but I didn't know exactly, you know, what I was doing and like, what does it even mean? Yeah. Um, where think... do I have to start? You know, you just go into the gym and you just do what other people do or you just talk to a few people or whatever and then you yeah. get started. And I think well, that's such a waste of time. The, this, this term lean muscle always gets me when I even see it on like some you know, people trying to promote their, their products or a supplement saying, oh, promotes lean the growth of lean muscle mm. but muscle is muscle that's mm. it at the end yeah. of the day it has the appearance of being lean yeah. if you reduce the body fat around it yeah. it's as simple as that but people think that lean muscle is this completely different thing yeah. which is only achievable by doing certain things so if, if you're listening you know and you you haven't been really um or watching and you haven't been you know seeing the results that you're seeing right um Maybe you want to get, let's, I think on, on average, uh, most people I speak to, and when I look at myself as well, I don't want to look like a, a fitness model, but mm-hmm. I want to feel great. Mm-hmm. And I also, we have to be honest, you also want to look good. You know, you yeah. want to look in the mirror and a lot of people find it a little bit difficult to talk about, but mm-hmm. I don't, I don't understand it because you have to be honest that the way that you look and the way that you perceive yourself makes a big impact on yeah. your confidence, right? The way you live your life. So that's why I'm a big believer of strength training. And but let's talk about someone, you know, who has a desk job um, just and wants to have a better looking body and feel better. What's the first thing you would do? First of all, I would... Of get into the habit of going to the gym, okay? Mm. But when you're in the gym, you want to be doing the right things. So you want to be following some form of resistance-based training program, which is going to be appropriate for that individual. So if you're not really doing it at the moment or you don't have much experience, then you need to start off with a basic program, which will hit the main muscle groups, focus on compound movements, such as you know pushing, pulling, mm. some squatting, deadlifting movements. Keep the weight low. There's no need to go too heavy too quick. Your focus for the first few weeks, maybe even months, should be learning how to contract the muscle mm. and place tension on the muscle. And then you can start to look at you know really overloading the muscles. Because I find that most people, they're like, oh, well, I'm going to do deadlifts, so I'm just going to do a stupidly heavy amount of, you know, when it comes to deadlifts or squats. And that's how everyone injures themselves. Yeah. So no need to go too heavy. Second of all, obviously you need to start understanding the basics of nutrition and what I get all of my clients who sign up with me I get them to to fill in a seven-day food log of all the foods which they're consuming on a seven-day basis because most people don't even know what they eat oh, so yeah. the moment they start writing down everything they're like they will look back at what they've eaten the past few days and they're like wow I do not eat very well at all mm. like this obviously makes sense now yeah so you but want to make I them get, aware of what they're eating right yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, because people will consume something. They have no idea how many calories are in it. Or how yeah, much exactly. Is in it. And you find that most people tend to be, they don't always over consume, but they're just eating the wrong things. Foods which are highly processed, which cause inflammation, make you feel like crap. A lot of people are just not eating enough protein. Obviously, protein is essential for, for building muscle. Um, and, you know, things could be improved, such as timing. Um, and you know, spacing out the meals evenly throughout the day instead of going you know, extended periods of time to not eating anything at all and then having just one big meal, which is basically just crap, yeah, you know, yeah. minimal nutritional value within yeah, it. Empty calories, right? Yeah. And so get so the, for those people, they get into a decent routine of training, follow up a structured program. Yeah. It will focus on them and their weaknesses. Get to understand their nutrition. That's highly important. 
And then third thing is to figure out what is going to be the best routine for you, mm. which you can stick to in the long run. Because the amount of people who go through these cycles of being in this good routine of training, eating well, and then for whatever reason, it all goes to shit. And they're like, yeah. oh, binge, stop training. Mm. And all the work, hard work, and progress they've made, they completely undo in a matter of weeks. And then they look at themselves and they're like, oh my God, I've let myself go. And then they get back into that routine of training yeah. and eating well. But then it stops again. So it's just this cycle of being on and off, on and off. You need to find out what is going to allow you to be consistent. So... I guess one of the key things is not to overdo it. Yeah. A lot of people go into the routine and think, I need to train every single day. They're too restrictive. They mm -hmm. think, oh, well, because I'm training now, I'm going to just eliminate all things which I enjoy and yeah. have chicken and broccoli every day. Um, and you know, I guess they just struggle to find the enjoyment in it. Yeah, I think or, this, this advice is also really good if you are working out for many years and maybe you stopped or maybe you you feel that you're not seeing the results, right? Just go back to the basics. Yeah, definitely go back to the basics. I think, you know, obviously, if you want to hire a professional, if you have a, if you hire a good coach, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily come cheap. But what I've found or would highly advise is that you find a respectable coach. Yeah. And just get them to take you through maybe it's one session, maybe two sessions. That's it, and get them to take you through some of the basic compound movements so that at least then once you've, you know, you've been corrected, you know what it is you should be doing. You then have some confidence when it comes to you going to the gym by yourself. Mm. The first three years of training, mm. the amount of mistakes I made was ridiculous. Like I was entirely self-taught and it was only from yeah. you know, just seeing a lack of progress in certain areas or training with yeah. training partners who'd be like, you know, you're doing this, you're not doing this very well. Yeah. Or just seeing myself on video and being like, that looks terrible. What am I doing there? It My took first so three years, I only bench pressed. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if I just had someone like me yeah, just yeah. go to my 18-year-old 18 18-year-old 18 self and just spend one hour with him and be like, look, Mike, stop doing this. You need to do that. This is how you move. Blah, blah, blah. And once, you've, once you know that, you know, your training is going to be so much more efficient and productive when you, you know, you move on from that point. Oh. So, like I said, if you just have – you know, invest a bit of money into having one session or two sessions with a yeah. coach. It can be very valuable. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to your own training, because there are a lot of things that you might do um, that could done differently. Just small tweaks make such a big impact. Yeah. Just we were talking about earlier on the focus thing, you know, and it's just it's just a you know mental shift, but yeah, makes such yeah. a big impact. When it comes when it came to my leg training, I just thought like you know I'm really killing myself training legs like it was so demanding trying to like I, was, well, I just thought I needed to lift heavy mm -hmm. it was only till recently I guess in the last year where I've been like right I'm clearly not doing something right with the amount of effort and frequency I'm training my legs they should be bigger than they are mm -hmm. and I realized that there was that lack of focus and lack of engagement of which muscle I was trying to target so say for example if I was doing squats Due to my flexibility in the way I'm put together in terms of um, you know, my legs in relation to my torso, every time I do a barbell back squat, it was it was rarely hitting my quads. Mm. It was just hitting more of my glutes and my lower back. Yeah. But I continued to do them, and I was like, why the hell are my quads so small? And I was mm. like, look, squatting clearly isn't optimal for you when it comes to building quads. Yeah. Let's just try different exercises which are going to focus on the quads more. Maybe think about placing tension on the quads when you're doing these exercises. And if you are going to squat, let's try and manipulate the squat so that you hit more of your quads instead of your glutes and your lower back. Yeah. And the moment I started doing that, my quads just blew up. Mm. And I often found that you know, my lower back, which seemed to be extremely large, almost unesthetic because yeah. everyone wants a small waist, but my lower yeah. back was huge. Wow. The moment I stopped doing heavy squats, yeah. it started to reduce in size a bit, and I was like, "Oh well, that makes sense. What you know? Why didn't I do that years yeah. ago?" Um, I, I, this this is a great point because I think a lot of people might look at this and say, "Oh well, maybe I can't do that. I'm not an expert." But everybody can learn um, more about their body, and I think that's even your responsibility. When mm -hmm. people, when I ask people, um, uh, when I ask myself a few years ago. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, what's your diet? What do you eat? You know, how do you work out? What are the, what are your weaknesses? You know, of your own body. Yeah, I, w I didn't have a real good answer to that. So, but now I'm more conscious, and I spend a lot of my time instead of maybe watching a TV show. I spend my time researching, you know, human anatomy, you know, uh, diet, calories, uh, yeah. all those things just to keep learning because this is your own body. You have to take care of it. I think that's how I look at it. And when people say, oh, I don't want to be that extreme. I'd rather have a beer or whatever. And I'm like, you know, drinking if your you, wife, you, right, life away. That's extreme to me. <laughs> yeah. If you want to do that, that's fine. Yeah. Don't complain about the results you're not getting. Yeah. Exactly. It's fully in your control. Yeah. So I think that's a great point. So I, I, w would you say that first, you know, basics, focus on the awareness and getting the exercises right and then move on to just getting to know your body a little bit better, but also in terms of exercises, what are your weaknesses, but also in terms of intensity, because I was talking to one of my friends in the gym last week and he said, I really struggle with intensity because um, I do the push-pull legs uh, routine. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm giving that a try as well, but he didn't get the same satisfaction because he wants to go all out, right? Every yeah. workout. And I'm like, I don't do that anymore. So I, I look at um, my week, you know, how did I perform over the week? Mm -hmm. And he looks at it over the day. So he was like, when you're talking to Mike, that's a good point to talk about. Like, what's your uh, approach or what's your view on that intensity and you know, getting the most out of a workout. I always, with a lot of the things I do, I think ahead. So I think if I do this, how am I going to feel about it? Mm. When it comes to my training, if I go to the gym and I have a very average workout, I know for a fact I'm going to be disappointed with myself. In fact, I'm probably going to be pissed off the rest of the day at the lack of effort which I put into that routine. And I know now, I know myself, if I really train to my best ability and push as hard as I can, when I walk out of the gym, I'm happy with myself. And because I know I push myself as hard as I can, the rest of the day, I'm in a good mood. Mm. And that, you know, it's one of the few things that you are fully in control of what you do within the gym. This, this is what I always think about when it comes to training legs, because training legs is not easy. It's very easy to just kind of, you know, just cruise through a workout and get out of the way. Yeah. But if I do that and I, you know, the, the session was average, it's always going to be in the back of my mind, that wasn't a very good leg workout, was it, Mike? That was yeah. poor effort from you. Yeah. And it can, you know, it can be powerful enough to have an effect on the rest of your day. So when I'm in there, I'm like, right, this is going to be the best session I could possibly have. And obviously, when it gets to, you know, the last few reps, when it really starts to burn and get uncomfortable, yeah. it's almost like you just you play a game with yourself to just see how much or how high a level of discomfort you can deal with and just think, come on, is that, is that, is that as bad as it's going to get? Is that as painful as it's going to get? Yeah. And almost laugh at the pain. Just try and get yourself comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like life. I will still struggle with it. Yeah. But I think I always think about like, what if, what if your life depended on it? What if you had yeah. a gun to your head yeah. and you had to get these five extra reps out? If you didn't, you'd die. Mm -hmm. You would do everything in your yeah, power yeah. to get those five <laughs> reps out. And it's the same with, say, for yeah, example, yeah. if you had your, your idol, whether it be The Rock or Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. if he was bending over you and saying, right, you're going to do these five more reps, you know, just shouting encouragement in your ear, you're going to be like, hell yeah, I am. And you'd get it, you'd get it done. Yeah. I know I would. So I always try and think of those scenarios to just get myself to that next level when I am training alone. And it does, it makes a big difference. And, and at the same time, how do you balance it with not going too hard or not maybe injuring yourself and preventing injury? How do you um, I balance think, that? Yeah, it's, again, I think it just comes with experience. I know there's there's a, there's a fine line between obviously pushing yourself to the max and injuring yourself. But I know if, if I am, it usually comes about when form tends to slip. If you can't keep your form okay. anymore, then it's time, right, okay, stop. 
But if you can continue to have the discipline over your body and keep your form perfect and place the tension where it needs to be, then you can continue pushing. But it usually tends to be you know, with the squat and the deadlift in particular, that's when people injure themselves. Mm. And if, you know, if your spine starts to bend, stop. Mm. Just stop because you are you are going to injure yourself. Yeah, so and then, and then you have to be focused on because that's that's the key I find when I look at the times that I injured myself is often when I was either talking or not focused or whatever mm-hmm. and then I might go too too hard and it all comes down to focus right yeah you think yeah definitely um, and it is it's, it's a good point I mean fortunately for me I've I've not had many injuries because I don't tend to ever do the one rep maxes or things like okay. that because the risk associated with it is so you so don't go bench to... bench press for example no you know because the, the only I've only had one major injury and that was a rotator cuff mm. issue and I think that was it wasn't one instance where it was like bam injured mm. it was accumulation of a number of different things and I think it was from doing but too much barbell bench pressing with okay. excessive weight yeah with improper form okay and it just it, it got to the point where I couldn't even do that yeah. anymore. So that's um, a good point, I think. So you don't do, I find it pretty interesting. So you don't do like one reps or two reps. No, and just work. It's, that's great. It's not something them. I'm interested in really. Yeah. You know, if someone says, oh, what's what's your max? I'm like, yeah. I, don't, I don't really care. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not a strength trainer. It's mm. not what I'm about. I want yeah. to look my very best. And although it can be a good indication of your performance, you're better off probably doing a three rep max mm. because you're still pushing yourself to you know your full potential in terms of strength but the risk associated with it is much less compared to just doing that one rep mm. um, particularly trying to do it I, I've, I've done it in the past before yeah and I was just like oh my god like I was very close to injuring myself mm. just doing stupid things just obviously when you're training with other people you try and outdo each other yeah um, and, you know, I was trying to do one rep max and squat, and I felt just, it was nothing too bad, but it felt like a little mini tear around my abdominals. And I was like, wow, that was completely unnecessary. I didn't need to do that. Yeah. And same with the deadlift. I find <laughs> most people do one rep max. It's probably the ugliest deadlift they've ever performed because they're doing yeah. everything in their power just to get it up. Yeah. I watched a video of me doing it, and I was like, that, that just didn't look good. It didn't feel good either. And I was yeah. like, you know, I'd, I'd rather just not do this. Yeah. It's not providing me with any benefit. One thing that I try to remind myself uh, these days is that I don't go to the gym to feel worse. I just go to the gym yeah. to feel better. And, you know, when you do stupid stuff like that, then you just, you know, you feel yeah, you, worse. You, you got to look after your body as well. It, it, it's something, you know, this is something I want to do, you know, long into the future. Yeah, so exactly. That's great. And, you can't, those people who have been doing a lot of strength training, stupid things with yeah. improper form, you know, later down the line, they end up with all these issues in their shoulders and their yeah. back. And, you know, you see some of the, the, the bodybuilders like Ronnie Coleman, he's like in a wheelchair yeah. from what stuff he was doing. I don't want to be like that. I want to follow an approach which is sustainable, which I can continue to do long into the future. And you hear about all these people who have injuries, you know, I've, I'm injury free and I've yeah. you know, touched wood. I hope it's going to continue like yeah. that. But I think that's also what sets you apart on YouTube. And that's why I think, do you think that's also a reason why you were able to grow the, the channel? Because right now on YouTube, you have like uh, more than 200,000 subscribers. Yeah. Uh, you, you did that. When did you start really focusing on YouTube? It was January, beginning okay. of January. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's, that's I decided to myself. I was I was on about fifteen thousand subscribers then. Yeah. As I like, write, because I'd be very inconsistent with my uploads. Mm. Like stop messing about. <laughs> Let's just focus on YouTube. And I was consi- like a video out every three to four days, and it was good content. And that was when it just started to blow up. And like you said about when you know, the, my my form not lifting crazy heavy weights. I think it was a bit of uh, you know a breath of fresh air for people because if you know, I look yeah. at some of these uh, these Instagram accounts or YouTubers with a very big following, you know a lot of them are not 
leading by example, you know, I respect what, like, say, for example, Simeon Panda does, mm-hmm. but he's showing these videos of doing these hammer curls with yeah. 40 kilogram dumbbells. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's impressive, but how many people are going to try and go off to the gym and do that and ruin their elbows? Like, that is, yeah, he should, he should at least say, you know, I, I gave this a try today. It's not something I do all the time. Be careful, guys. If you're trying to do this, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, he's obviously been training for years. He understands how to look after himself and not damage himself. But other people don't have a clue and they think, well, he's got big arms and he's hammer curling 40 kilos. So let's see how heavy I can go. And then that's when you know they injure themselves. And it's it funny mm-hmm. the way I train because it's slow and controlled. Yeah, control. That's like, that's what I also notice. Control. Like, oh, you. So you always lift slow. And I'm like, well, I wouldn't necessarily call it slow. But I would always say it's under control. Mm. One of the benefits of reducing the tempo is it gives you time to think about what you're doing. If you try and rush through a set, mm. you don't give yourself time to think about what the hell is going on, or even to get your breathing right. But when you slow it down, you really you can just think about every fiber which you're engaging. And you know, even if you do have like a sloppy rep, take your time, and make sure that you don't do it again. And you often find when you do it a lot slower. Yeah. The muscle is actually working for almost twice the amount of time than, say, for example, if you were to rush through a set. Yeah. So it's the whole principle of time under tension, which you're putting into effect, which you know, kind of have its its benefits. Yeah. So yeah, that's one of the things that I also notice is that you 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 always um, tell people just to or show mo- mostly. You that's what I also like. You don't tell. Oh, you should do this and that, right? Just you should, yeah, you just yeah, Show think... how you do it, and when yeah. you look at it, you get inspired to. Oh, hey, maybe I should try that as well. Yeah, I think I learned from other people, other people in the industry saying this is the way to do it and this yeah. is the only way to do it. I was like, no, it's not. And we, when usually those people who say that there's only one way, they open themselves up to a lot of criticism. And the human body is just so complex and everyone is so unique in their own way that there's not one approach that fits all. Yeah. You've got to kind of figure out what works best for you. And, you know, I, I think originally I'd started off saying things like that because I didn't want people to, you know, argue with me and say, oh, mm-hmm. you know, well, that's wrong. I would literally yeah. just say, this is how I do it. It's worked for me. Yeah. Give it a try if you want. But this also works as well. Yeah. You know, it, it is ridiculous the number of different approaches. You know, like the amount of different diets that are out there yeah well, man, i, I, the I the really day, don't like diets yeah at the end of the day it's they all follow the same kind of uh approach yeah it doesn't matter if you're intermittent fasting or doing low carb yeah. or carb backloading or you know the alternate day fasting if you are in a calorie surplus you'll gain weight yeah yeah yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. deficit exactly. you will lose weight it doesn't yeah. matter how you do it and that, it doesn't matter how often you eat, right, as well? No. Yeah. I think the meal frequency, maybe it gets a little bit more important when you're, say, for example, trying to drop body fat percentage from 7% to 5%. Yeah. But for most people out there, you know, that's way down on the priority list. The absolute ultimate priority is your calorie intake. Then, down from that, it's your macronutrient split. So proteins, carbs, fats. And then, you know, so on. Yeah. As, as long as you, if you can nail your calorie intake and your macro split, you will, you can get yourself in very good condition. Yeah. So th- this is also, I think, why you grew the channel, because you're really honest about this stuff. And you're not yeah. like, hey, man, I developed an awesome diet. Please pay me money. Yeah. I think <laughs> that, that's one of the things that's worked is if you look at all my videos, I am not trying to sell anything. No, no. I barely even talk about my own services yeah and i think i guess again that's a breath of fresh air because the amount of people who are just trying to push their yeah. own agenda or their own product and i just thought after i've seen people do that i just think oh like yeah. you, just, you are constantly trying to sell something i have no interest in you anymore yeah if i just keep it clean yeah. and free of advertising and sales you know Hopefully, people will appreciate that. Yeah. Where did you learn that from? From your own experience, or did you learn that from books or anything? Or did you? Ah, that's just yeah. just watching others. Yeah. I, I would say a, a lot of what I've learned is from observing other people 
and okay. the potential mistakes which they've made. Like even people who I would used to respect, as soon as they would get a following, they just started spamming people with everything they were trying to sell. Mm. And you know, it gets to the point where it's like, you stop trying to sell me stuff. It's just not cool anymore. Yeah. I don't want to see that. Yeah. And I thought, I don't want to be that guy who's constantly pushing his products. Yeah, it's not cool. You know, people don't want to see that. And and because you you have a, I think a good balance of um, you also set up your website, online coaching. Um, at the same time, also publishing the YouTube videos, staying consistent. So you at the same time you providing value, but you also building you know the business side of it because you are also yeah. coaching people and um maybe do you also have ebooks or anything or the the, the yeah. ebooks are coming out yeah um and that's they need to be out because like i said i, I can't yeah. take on any more clients like yeah i have a limited amount of time which i put aside for customized programs or online coaching that if i were to take on any more people then obviously there's less time that goes to putting these youtube videos together and creating content yeah so i need to start putting out products and services which don't necessarily take up as much of my time yeah but i still want to offer services which people can benefit from mm. so things like the ebooks possible membership area and things like that uh you know that's the direction which i'm going to go down and then i will continue to coach people but you know really just limit how many people i coach yeah and, you know if i need to put my prices up then that's the way it is i guess supply and demand yeah yeah it, i think the um just finding the because you can either go um all in on selling stuff what you see sometimes is that people uh, like you said are trying to push uh, their programs too much mm -hmm. but at the other side there's if you just put out a lot of free content that's also not sustainable Right. Yeah. Uh, depending on maybe uh, if you want to, I don't know, monetize just your YouTube channel through ads, but I don't know if that's. But it you, it, de yeah. it depends. I think what I've learned, obviously, everyone needs money, mm -hmm. but I've not always been massively motivated by being as rich as I could possibly be. I know after yeah. a certain point, once you reach a certain level of income, getting more money doesn't really drastically improve your life. Yeah. I've always just wanted enough money to buy the things that I want which are going to provide me with actual value and to, to go on holidays and travel the world. Yeah. I want to be able to do the things, just anything and not have to feel financially restrained. Mm. And obviously in the past year, financially I've, I've done very well. And I think because, you know, I'm at a point now where I'm not massively motivated by money. Mm. Yeah. I don't feel like I have to sell my products and my services if I was desperate, yeah, exactly. I need the money, I'd be like, shit, I need to really promote my programs. I'd be like, yeah. buy this, buy this, you need to buy this. Yeah. When you're comfortable, I'm, I feel a lot, I'm a lot more casual about it. And if anything, I'm probably too casual because people would be like, oh, so what's like your marketing strategy? And I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't really have one. I just, you know, I, I put out this content, yeah. which I hope people enjoy. If you want to work with me, that's cool. Yeah. If you want to buy this, that's fine. But I'm not, you know, I'm not desperate for your money. I don't need it necessarily yeah uh, that the thing which has been great for me is that I'm, i genuinely enjoy doing this mm. so i don't mind if there's no financial reward in it yeah i'm just doing it because i like doing it and I, I like the feeling of helping people and being respected within my industry yeah yeah so it got, comes from a good place and i think when people notice that they don't mind because uh, obviously if you want to get coaching or whatever people know that's a premium service whatever so i think I, I when you look at the way that you build your you know youtube following and a social media following i think it's a great example of um providing value and mm -hmm. then also at the same time you know the business side that grows organically yeah so i think when people if people want to start their own uh, stuff online in maybe different fields or in the same field or whatever I think that's a great strategy and, and you proved that because you did that in, you know, seven, eight months. Yeah. You, you just, you can't, you shouldn't be financially motivated to begin with. Mm. You've just got to understand that the money's not going to come straight away necessarily. Yeah. You've just got to be patient with that. That's and if you're good enough, whatever it is that you're doing, the money will come mm. at the end of the day. And it's the amount of, you know, 
emails I get about people wanting to do potential brand deals or me doing like a promoted post yeah. or whatever it might be on my YouTube channels. I'm just like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, you know, at the end of my video or do an Instagram post where I'm trying to promote some teeth whitening service. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell has this got to do with anything? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen other people in the fitness industry do that. You know, they do yeah. cheesy photo going like, you know, thanks to so-and-so for making my teeth white. I'm like, yeah. What? Why? What has that got to do with anything? Like, yeah, you've clearly just done it for the money, and yeah. you don't care about you know your followers. My respect for you has gone down after doing something yeah. like that. It's funny, right? Because often when you, um, I think everyone starts with the good intentions because otherwise people won't follow you. If you're in fashion or fitness or you know business, mm. whatever, you try to provide value, and then people follow you. But then a lot of people go out there. And then they just do make, you know, dodgy decisions, maybe. Yeah. And then it, the reason you started in the first place just goes out the window. And I think it's really challenging as well just to stay on track and stick to your values. So how do you, have you thought about it, like moving forward? Because now you're growing and that will continue to grow. Have you thought about how you're going to stick to your values in the future? Yeah, it's, well... Let's say if, if I'm to ever work with a brand or a company, I would have to truly respect that brand and value their products because I don't mm. want to be associated with anything that could potentially damage my image. Mm. Um, but I think my, my values will always remain the same because it's, it is crazy how, how long it can take to build up a reputation and for it to so easily just be lost. Yeah. And I don't want to do anything that is going to damage that reputation, which I have. So, you know, whatever, you know, there's, there's TV shows, which I've been asked to go on. And I've been like, is that really going to help my image? No, you know, yeah, like, all, what kind all, of, like, have you heard of Love Island? Um, no, but I think we have something it's, similar it's, in the Netherlands pretty, as well. It's pretty big <laughs> in the UK. And obviously, if I'd gone on something like that, yeah, yeah I could have massively grown my following but i mean I, just thought, yeah. like, I will if i do that i'm yeah. always going to be associated with that show yeah and it's just not something i want to get involved with you yeah. know you it is hard because yeah. these opportunities are going to come yeah so this just, is awesome man because you know what you want and you consciously moving towards the direction and uh, one of the videos uh, that I enjoyed from you is like not a fitness video where you talked about overcoming your obstacles. Um, yeah. I think it's the one that you were saying that you just moved to London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you talked about some awesome, um, you know, personal development stuff, you know, mindset, uh, mm -hmm. me mental exercises. I was wondering, and I'll link that video in the description mm -hmm. as well so people can check that out. I really, that's a great, um, you know, from a mental point of view, or from a mindset point of view, great video. I want to ask you, where did you learn that mindset? Because you were talking about dealing with obstacles and enjoying that, and that's that's like your path to life, and not complaining and those those kind of things. I think it's a lot of it's self-taught. It's something five years ago I would, I would have had no idea of, but I guess through different business ventures I've been through, different relationships. And I guess I'm, I'm a pretty, I would say I'm a little bit more introverted than extrovert. I'm not the type of person that constantly needs to be surrounded by people. A large chunk of my time, I'm by myself, I'm alone, and I'm not talking, which means I'm doing a lot of thinking. And when I'm doing a lot of thinking, I've, you know, you just constantly ask yourself these questions and try and understand what it is that actually makes you happy or what, it, how can I get the best out of what I'm doing? And it's that constant you know, cycle of asking yourself questions that really has helped me to understand a lot of, you know, just mastering myself. And I think a lot of people just don't do enough thinking. They're constantly mm. distracted by either being surrounded by people, watching TV, being on their phone, mm. that they very rarely spend time in silence thinking. Mm. Um, you know, because I've done that, like I said, I feel as though I know myself you know, very well. I'm yeah. very, I'm very comfortable with myself, and I could have, you know, I could go days being by myself because I'm, 
I have conversation with my mind all the time. <laughs> but other people, they can't stand being alone. Yeah. Because they, just, they can't stand yeah. just being with their own mind. You're always in good company, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that that's your favorite way to uh, develop yourself, right? Just mentally, just mostly uh, through in introspection. You've always got to take a bit of time out, ask yourself questions. Yeah. And just look at the bigger picture and see where you're going. You know, are you happy with what you're doing? What do you want to improve in your life? What are your weaknesses? What are the things which are constantly setting you back or preventing you from getting the things you want? Um, and I think one thing that's really helped is actually listening to podcasts mm. um, because I, lot, I find it very hard to sit down and read. Um, I, I don't know why, I just I lose focus and I find that if I have to read, I have to be sat down in silence to be able to read. But when I'm listening to a podcast or an audio book, I can be doing lots of different things. I could be cleaning the house, I could be cooking my food, mm -hmm. I could be driving, I could be doing some cardio, and I'm constantly learning. Yeah. And even though you know you might not necessarily be in a conversation with someone, it feels like you are part of a conversation when you listen to a podcast. Yeah, it's true. And I think that you know some podcasts are not great, but some are really good. Like some of them yeah. are almost life changing. You know, some yeah. of the conversations which you listen to and you're like. No way! Like that makes so much sense. Yeah. Like, it then forces you to ask questions, you know, about yourself. And yeah. I would definitely recommend if you want to improve yourself, you have to do a little bit of learning and listen to listen to others who are the best at what they do mm. or pros in their field, because you can learn a lot from the mistakes they've made and the keys to why they are so successful in the first place. Mm. Yeah, I I really love that mindset because you are basically basically saying you know you, you look at yourself as a student and always learning from others, but also learning from yourself, mm -hmm. right? Just yeah. looking, you know, what am I feeling? What am I thinking? What did I do wrong? What can I do better? All those things, and if you just take some time just to think about it, and I have see that in my own personal life as well. That's how I started you know, online and just being even more productive as well is just taking time for some, uh, some reflection. That, that's, that's one of the reasons what I had, I was up in Newcastle. I had my own gym. It was a studio. I was in a partnership with the, it was a friend. Um, and I was there for about three years. Mm. And what, that was one of the things that caused me to take that leap and move to London and do my own thing, because I was seeing a lack of progress and I could see, I could predict the future yeah. that if I didn't do anything drastic in a year's time, I would be in the same gym. I'd be training the same people charging the same amount of money and nothing really would have progressed. I wouldn't have grown mm. as a, you know, an individual. I think that's that a great thought, exercise by the way. Yeah. That thought Just, was yeah. so scary to me that I was like, I'm, I'm not letting that happen. I'm not just wasting my life away. I was like, I need, I need to change. Yeah. And one of the best scenarios where people change is when they're in desperate situations. Mm, yeah. So I was, you know, I was comfortable up in Newcastle. I had my company. I wasn't necessarily happy, but I had my clients. You know, I was living okay. I could take time off. I could have lived a pretty, you know, comfortable life. But I was, like, but I was not happy with that life. Yeah. And I knew I wouldn't be if I continued. So I was like, right, and. When you have these one-on-one -on -one clients, it's it's hard to say no to money, you know. Yeah. And I, I just knew this was this training all these people was very time-consuming. It wasn't allowing me to do YouTube. Yeah. So I took that leap. I was like, right, you know, leave the company which I created from the bottom. Leave my friends. Leave mm -hmm. all my clients, and I moved temporarily to stay at my family house in Leeds before mm -hmm. moving to London. Yeah. Sometimes you have month. to take a step back, right? Yeah. So at that point in time, I had no clients. Yeah. I had no money coming in whatsoever. I mm -hmm. had no website. Uh, the only money which I had was like a, the sponsorship from EHP Labs, which is the supplement company, my only sponsor. Yeah. And then that at that point there, you're like, right, this is serious. Yeah. I need to start <laughs> earning some money because I, you know, I, I have nothing going on. And that's when yeah. I sat at home hours. I built my own website on Squarespace. Okay. That was then a platform where people could pay for my services, and then yeah. I could start you know, earning a bit of money. And then as soon as I moved down to London, yeah. I made sure that I got a, a nice apartment to, to film in, mm. I had my camera and I was okay. like, right, let's, 
let's crack on with YouTube. So basically, you just had a camera, an apartment, and a website, and you just yeah, you know, yeah, and uh, a, a, a hell of a lot of the videos which I've done have just been the camera sitting on a tripod and me talking to it. <laughs> yeah. um, it honestly, doesn't have to be perfect, right? No, it, like you don't. People have said, like, I love the fact that, you know, there's no fancy editing. It's not like a drone footage of me yeah. walking to the gym. All that stuff is pretty unnecessary. Yeah, and I think yeah, yeah. people feel like, like they can relate to you a little bit more mm. if the footage is, you know, pretty raw. Yeah. You know, there's nothing fancy or over the top. Mm. Obviously, I needed help uh, when I'm in the gym to get like people holding the camera and stuff. Yeah. But that was pretty much it. I'd go home and then... I'd learned a little bit about editing with, you know, Instagram and stuff, Instagram yeah. videos. But when it comes to editing YouTube videos, it was a little bit more complex. So yeah. I had to teach myself how to do that. And, you know, the more you do it, the more you pick up uh, a few tricks. And you do have to have certain, a certain element of creativity yeah. to, you know, make a, a decent video. Mm. But that was really all I needed. So you did um, everything yourself? Website? Yeah. Video editing? Yeah. And, yeah, it's, right. but it's got to the point now. Yeah. I'm still trying to do everything myself. Yeah, and it, I'm I'm overwhelmed with everything that needs to be done. Yeah, with, with all the video editing, dealing with all my clients. Yeah, trying to you know, do my social media marketing, create content for all the social media uh, platforms. It's yeah. it's too much now. And what I have I had to do is sit back, look at everything that I'm doing, what am I doing within my day? What am I spending a large chunk of my time doing? Mm. And just decide, right, should do I really- you write it down as well or do you just think about it? A bit of both. Okay. I think writing down probably helps a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but just realize like, right, okay, is this is this working out for you? Is this, is this something which somebody else could potentially do? Mm. Or do you just need to stop doing it completely? That's a great one. That's what I've started doing Recently, I, I spend so much time just looking through social media and pointless, yeah. pointless things. You might learn a few things from other people and see what they're doing, but generally, yeah. a lot of uh, time spent on social media is wasted time. Yeah, I'm, you, you call just, it, you try to internalize it by saying you're doing research, but... Yeah, you, you just know. most people are aimlessly scrolling. Yeah. It's okay if, if you're watching my YouTube video, that's fine. You can do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can do anything else, you should be doing it. Yeah. Uh, um, so... Yeah. It was that, and then I think one of the things I'm spending a lot of time on is because uh, I do a lot of these customized programs. Yeah. So many people have bought them. I was like, I'm spending a large chunk of my day sitting on my computer, writing these programs, yeah. dealing with these clients, along with my online clients. And I've just been like, right, I can't carry on doing this because I'm, I'm, you know, I can't make videos anymore because I'm, this is overwhelming. Yeah. So I basically took them. Even though you know I was getting good money from it, I had to just be like, right, just put it as sold out. Yeah, which is annoying because you're saying no to money, mm. but ultimately you free up a little bit of time, and that time I put into creating these eBooks. And once they're on sale, you know, they people can click buy an eBook, and it will have everything in pretty much the the, the customized programs with that. Uh, it's not going to be quite as customized. It's going to be a little bit more generic, but yeah. I'm still offering a service to people. And that will free up a lot of my time. Yeah, one of the things that I ch find challenging, challenging as well is um, dealing with opportunities. Because so, when I started my blog, I only pub I published two articles a week, mm -hmm. and that's how it grew. And a few articles went viral. One of the articles was read like two million times or something. And then all of a sudden, you see you get a lot of exposure and people signing up to your newsletter and new opportunities showing up. But then I think the biggest challenge is what are you going to pursue? Because I did, I knew I wanted to start a podcast because I really enjoy, you know, having these type of conversations. But also I do some solo podcasts about stuff that people ask me, uh, similar to you, that people ask you about training. Um, I got a lot of questions about productivity or business. Um, and I thought, you know, that's a great way to go in, more in depth on my podcast. Mm -hmm. But then, you, you, yeah. Carry on, carry yeah. On. But I was just saying, they, there's also, also, I could potentially go to YouTube or maybe spend more time on social media because that's not, I don't do that a lot because I also, you know, I have a business with my family as well. I run that as well. 
So you need to think, I need to think about uh, how do I spend my time? So that's one of the things that I'm conscious, uh, continuously thinking about. Yeah. You've also got to learn to say no yeah. as well to opportunities that come your way. Exactly. Uh, you know, the amount of times people have approached me about doing an app with them mm. or joining them in some kind of venture. You, you, if you say yes to everything, you're going to have no time whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, even now with, with emails, I tend to find this the case with a lot of young people. I don't think they understand the value of someone's time. So they'll, yeah. they will email me, bless them. And they're like, Mike, can you help me out? Like, I really need help with you. <laughs> Trust me. I'm like, people are paying me to do this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I am not like, I would love to help everyone. Yeah. If I sat all day, every day, helping people who send these emails or inboxes, I would have no time to do anything. No. So, you know, it was to the point where I would spend a lot of time on an email saying, you know, I'd love to help you, but mm. you know, this is my, my situational priority of my time goes to my, my clients who are paid. Yeah. Now, like, I'm just like, I'm, I just kind of, I got to be pretty ruthless and just say, sorry, yeah. I, I can't or just no. Yeah. Because, I don't want to come across as being ignorant and ignoring people. No. But I want to just tell them, I, you know, I can't do this. I don't have the time. I'm sorry. Best of luck with your journey. You know, and that's one of the reasons why I continue to make videos. Of if, if someone is stuck on something, I'll just straight up find the particular topic where I talk about it, copy and paste, and put it in the email and send it. Yeah, I used to do that sometimes as well. Just refer to an article in your, in your case, video, I think. Uh, but I, I still try to keep in touch you know with readers or listeners because um i also don't like some people well unless you're tim ferris which is literally impossible to connect yeah. with everyone because he has millions mm -hmm. of listeners and readers but um also some some people say oh why do people email me or why do like uh, i don't know i don't also don't like that too because you i get a lot of input as well do you because People ask you questions and you're like, oh, this is a great topic to yeah, yeah. make a video about, right? So you, I think it's always great to keep that open as well. So people keep feeding you stuff. This is another interesting thing as well is it's like, right, is it time for me to start or to employ someone mm. to you know handle a lot of the tasks which I just don't have time for? Yeah. And I thought like, well, what if someone was to act on my behalf and reply to <laughs> yeah. emails? on Facebook inbox, Instagram inbox, you yeah. know, my main email address. And I would just, I don't, I don't know if I'd trust anyone. Nah, I mean, it's a bit, little, little bit weird. Yeah, like, yeah. it's, if, if, if yeah, I, I don't think there's anyone that could, or I would feel comfortable with them acting on my behalf yeah. and communicating with a fan or a client. I yeah. just, so many people do that in the fitness industry. Yeah. You know, these people offer online coaching. Yeah, personal they development actually, too. Yeah. They're not working directly with the coach themselves. I'm yeah, like, exactly. how can you say you're a yeah, coach yeah. if you don't even speak to this person face to face? Yeah. You shouldn't be allowed to do that. And I think that's is given the online coaching uh, a bad name in the fitness industry because of these people pay, you know, charging extortionate prices and not delivering a quality service. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, I'm in demand because people see that this is genuinely what I do. Yeah. If you work with me, I'm going to speak to you once a week, <laughs> yeah. Skype, and we're going to talk. Do you find that if people I... find that um, uh, surprising? Because when I answer emails, people are like, sometimes they're like, oh, I didn't expect an answer. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> people, people have done that. Like, oh, you know, they wouldn't expect me to have the time to reply to an image, uh, 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 a yeah. message. Um but, you know, I've, I spoke to some, some of the clients who I've worked with in the past, and some of them have said, like, you don't have a crazy following to the point where I know, without a doubt, you wouldn't have time to work with mm, me. Yeah. You didn't have a small following. You had a decent following where I think, you know what, this this person will probably have time to speak to me yeah. and invest the time into working with me. Yeah. And that's how, you know, quite a few have ended up working with me in the past. But, I mean, if I'm in a situation where, you know, in the future, if I have a million YouTube subscribers, um, you know, half a million on Instagram. Am I am I genuinely going to have the time to yeah. work with people one on one in the future? Mm. I don't. I really don't know. Yeah. I, like I enjoy doing it, but it would probably get to the point where 
you know, I, I probably wouldn't have the time to spend doing that. I'm better off continuing to create content and maybe looking to expand into different ventures. And I honestly think that's probably what's going to happen. Mm. But at the moment, everything seems to be working well. I do enjoy yeah. the online coaching. Um, but I do, I think I'll probably take it on a little bit too much than I can handle at the moment in terms of, you know, how many clients I have. Because I've... I try and stick to a, a regime where I have like a YouTube upload every three to four days and it's okay. been three days since my last up upload and I have nothing to upload and I'm like, yeah. oh crap, like you have nothing to upload <laughs> because you spent so much time training people in the gym or one-on-one, -on -one. like yeah. you need to get back on it. But I'm like, oh, I lose money. It's yeah. like, yeah. You, you just have to decide, like I said before, what's taking your time, what's taking up a large chunk of your time and making time for you know my priority which really is youtube because the growth rate is still pretty high yeah it's what is you know building a relationship with my viewers and you know at the end of the day could you know help my business grow even more yeah it's always difficult i think uh the people everyone faces the same challenges when it comes to your career or you know even if you do something online offline doesn't really matter it's always a continuous process. And I think once everyone's aware of that, everyone is facing the same challenges, especially the ones that are, you know, striving to move forward and, you know, improve or get better, grow their mm -hmm. business, channel, career, all those things, right? Yeah. You have to figure those things out. There's no easy answer. No, definitely not. And uh, I don't know. I think that's a great place to leave the listener and the viewer with. Um, are there any like parting messages or something that you want to share with uh, people? Oof, it's a it's a hard one. I'd probably just say, don't rush into anything, but don't make excuses. I think a lot of people make excuses mm. as to why they're not doing something they should be doing or making progress. I think you just have to be real with yourself and. You know, for a lot of the reasons why things aren't going your way, it's it really is not other people. Yeah, it's down to you. Yeah, and you need to stop making excuses and take action. You know, it's like with my YouTube channel, I used to procrastinate all the time. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I should be doing this, but I'm not going to do it. You know, and I thought, you know, just being afraid of the camera or thinking I didn't know enough, or you know, what I would think of so many different excuses to why I wasn't yeah. taking action, and I was just like. Stop being ridiculous and just start making videos. Just do it. Yes, they're not going to be perfect. Yeah. I'm not going to be the best in terms of presenting myself on video, but it will it will come with time. Just start doing. Yeah, I, feel, I feel like we need to do a follow-up podcast almost because yeah, this is definitely. something that we can probably talk for another hour about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's like that on. inner voice that's so, you know, it's always there. And um, I, I, you know, I write a lot about overcoming procrastination but i have to deal with it in my own life as well so yeah it's, me too still yeah, yeah exactly so that's a great point man i um so you know what's the best way to um you know reach you or learn more about you or what would you like people to check out i guess youtube channel will be the main one you'll find definitely the most most content there and probably get learn the most from uh, but i'm also on instagram uh mike thurston don't really use Twitter, to be honest. I don't feel as though that's the right platform for me. I've got my Facebook page as well. Um, and, yeah, if you do want to drop me an email, actually, should I put my email out on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to get more emails. Yeah, we were just talking about it, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give my email out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you really yeah. want to get in touch with me, you'll find it. You'll find it. Somewhere. Yeah, that's a good one. I recently heard that as well. Someone who was saying, if you really want to get in touch with me, you'll just find it on the internet. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. Yeah, I'll link uh, all your channels, uh, your um, social and your YouTube channel and my favorite videos as well. So people can yeah. check that out. Yeah, the definitely. one that I refer to. And uh, I will you know, keep following you. Looking forward to some more content. And uh, yeah, like I said, man, we had a lot to talk about. So uh, if people we'll want to hear more, you. let <laughs> me know and we'll do a follow up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Take care. Awesome. See ya. All right.